So in the article, we've learned about some of the basics of the Blender UI, like headers and windows. Now we're going to take a closer look at the program and get you comfortable with the navigation, as well as customizing the interface. All right, so the first thing we're going to learn how to do is basic navigation. So all the navigation is going to be done with the middle mouse button and a keyboard combination. So if we hold down the middle mouse button, we can orbit the view here. And if we hold control, middle mouse button, and then drag the mouse in and out, we can begin to dolly the view. If we hold shift, middle mouse button, drag around, we can now pan the view. So again, if you just hold the middle mouse button, you can orbit. If you hold control, middle mouse button, and drag in and out, we can dolly. And then if we hold shift, middle mouse button, we can begin to pan around. You can also hold control and scroll the middle mouse button wheel to move left and right. If we hold shift and do the same thing with the middle mouse button wheel, we can move up and down. So that's kind of the basic navigation inside of Blender. It's really easy to get familiar with. Everything is done with the middle mouse button and then a keyboard combination. So now let's talk about basic selection. So in typical 3D applications, you would select with the left mouse button. In Blender, you select with the right mouse button. So if I go out here and I have my light source up at the top, if I were to use my left mouse button, you can see that we kind of get this crosshair placed. And what we want to actually do is use the right mouse button, and that will select the light source. So the left mouse button actually places this 3D cursor in our viewport. And this does two things. The first thing it does is acts as an object's origin point. So if we were to create a new object, it would be created on this 3D cursor. So if I just press the left mouse button anywhere in the viewport here, so we placed it down here, and I go to Create. Let's just select Cube, and we can see that a cube gets dropped in where we had that 3D cursor. The other thing it acts as is the object's pivot point. So if I go in here to my cube, and I press the left mouse button on any of these corners here, we get the 3D cursor placed. And now if I go down here to this little icon and select that, we can change the pivot point. If I select 3D Cursor, you can see that the Translate Gizmo now gets placed where we put that 3D Cursor. We can move it along that pivot point there. All right, so I'm just going to go back down here and change the pivot point back to Active Element. So now we're going to learn a bit about rotation. So if I press R on my keyboard, you can also go down here to this little icon, which is the Rotate icon. When you press that, you can see that we can rotate on any of the selected axes here. But if you were to press R on your keyboard, you can see that it changes to this little arrow here, and we can just move our mouse around and our object begins to rotate. But it's kind of rotating on all different axes. To lock it to a specific axis, you can just press the axis that you want on your keyboard. So if I want to lock this to the X axis, I press X, and it snaps to the X axis, and I can rotate it just along the X axis. I can do the same for the Y and the Z, pressing that on my keyboard, and it'll lock to that specific axis. All right. And we can also go back to our Move tool, and then right here we have the Scale tool. And when you select that, you can see that you can scale the object on any of the axis that you want. If we press S on our keyboard, we kind of get the same gizmo that we had with the Rotate tool. We can see we can just move the mouse in and out to scale our object. And if we want to scale it on a specific axis, we do the same thing. Press X, scale on the X axis, Y on the Y, and the Z by pressing Z on the keyboard. All right, great. So in the article, we talked a bit about headers and windows. And I just kind of want to show you how you can begin to customize your windows here. So if I go up here to the right, we have our outliner window, and under that, we have the Properties window. If I select any of these icons here, we can see we get a couple different options. We have 16 total different windows we can use. And you can change any of these to one of these that you would like. So I could change this Outliner window to a 3D view if I wanted. You can see that the header now gets placed on the bottom. 
I can select that again and change it back to the outliner. I can do the same for this one if I wanted to say I wanted it to be a graph editor. I could change this window to a graph editor. And then once again, you can go down here to the icon, select that, and change it back to the properties panel. You can also split up the user interface inside of Blender if you wanted to. So if we wanted to add more viewports into our scene here than just the perspective one, we can go up here to the top and just click and drag. You can see that as we do that, we drag in another viewport. And if we select this little black line here in the corner until we see the arrows, we can right click and go to split area. And this will split and add another viewport wherever this split is. So we can select either side. I'm just going to drop it in right here. And now we get another viewport. And if you want to join these back together, all you need to do is select the line here until you see the double arrow, right click and do join area. And then you can select which area you want to join to. We'll just select the top one. And now that gets placed back into our viewport. And then if we want to join this back together so that we have one view, make sure we have the double arrow there, right click, join area, and select which side we want to join to. And there we go. We're now back into the single viewport. We can also do this with our windows. If I select this arrow, I'm just going to drag it out so we can see a little bit more here. And if I select this little tab up here on the top, you can see like the three lines there. If I select that, I can drag that down and now we have another separate window here. And again, I could change this to whatever I like. I could change it to a text editor if I wanted to. Again, I can select the header down here and change it to maybe a timeline. So you have a lot of customization and you're able to add and subtract onto the interface to get what you want. Again, I can go down here to the little line, make sure we have the double arrow, and I can just do join area. You can see I can also split this area if I wanted to. So I'm going to join this and I'll join it back up there. So now we have just our properties panel. All right, so there's one last thing I want you to keep in mind. Over here we have our tool shelf. And when we're in object mode, you can see we have things like create, relations, and that kind of thing. But anytime we change the mode, this tool shelf is going to change a little bit depending on the mode that we select. So if I go to edit mode, we now see that this tool shelf changes. We still have create, but now in our tools tab, we have more options. We have things like extrude and subdivide and knife, the kind of things you would expect when you're editing your polygons. And again, if we go down here to the modes panel and I just select sculpt mode, we can now see our tool shelf reflects something you would expect for a sculpting application. So you can change the size of your brush and that kind of thing. And again, I can go down to mode and change it to vertex paint. And then our tool shelf changes based on that mode. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're missing a tab down here that you had before, it was probably because you're in a different mode. So again, we can just go back to object mode and we have several different options like insert keyframes and that kind of thing. All right, awesome. So now you have a strong understanding of the Blender UI, how to navigate and how to customize the interface. So now you can take what you've learned and begin to tackle more complex projects. Be sure to check back to the blog for more great tutorials.